Codex Curiositas by Helion, son of Romilon, Liber Primus, The Natural History of Idiacara, Caput Unum, The Desert Firm. In the shifting sand of Idiacara, there lurks a creature as ancient as the dune itself, the Desert Firm or as the Kemetians called them, the Apep Das This firm, born not of the salty depths of the ocean, but of the arid wasteland, was regarded by the Kemets as the very progeny of the chaos in Karthi. Unlike their sea-dwelling cousin, the Charybdis, the Apeps, have adapted to live on dry deserts, traversing the shifting sands with an eerie fluidity as if they were swimming in the water. This is my inscription that will explain how the desert firm was able to inflict unspeakable horror and even the mighty mother Gaeum herself trembled in fear. The heads of this beast possess unique weaponry that allows them to capture their prey in two scenarios. Right under the esophagy, there lies two pairs of retractable pincer jaws to ensnare their prey and drag them into the esophagus. The pincer jaw are able to retract inside their body due to their attachment to the muscularized pharynx. Surrounding their heads lie the tentacles, their sensory organ that detect mechanical pressure when stepped on or chewed on. The tentacles resemble the leaves of the eternal plant, Kuru some of the few plants that can grow in the desert of Idiakara. Together with the pincer jaws, the firms predate unsuspecting prey by ambushing them from below. On the dorsum part of the esophagus, there lies a forcible proboscis with teeth-like serrations on its end, functioning as the extension of their mouth. While the proboscis possesses teeth-like serrations, they are not a part of the firm's digestive systems. Unlike the pincer jaws which are connected to the pharynx and esophagus, the proboscis only functions as grabbers, acting like arm for the armless worms. On top of their heads, there are antennae that possibly are used as sensory organs to detect light and odor, akin to our eyes and nose. Together, the antennae and the proboscis are used to chase down and grab escaping prey if the first method fails. Inside their esophagus, there lie recurved needle-like phalanges or fangs that filter out sand from entering their digestive system. These inward-facing phalanges also prevent their prey from trying to come out of their mouth. 
behind the flames, there are sets of teeth to digest the prey mechanically by peristalsis. Once the prey are torn into shreds, they will enter the stomach and digest it alchemically. Not all prey were used as source of sustenance. Sometimes they were used as hosts for the worms to propagate their progeny. Once worms are mature enough, they will go to the nearest water source, either underground or surface water bodies. They will erect their bodies with most of their bodies submerged into the sand they do not eat anymore they will have enough energy in store for them to focus for reproduction the proboscis and the pincer jaws will be resorbed to conserve energy the underground part of the body will be used to absorb water while above ground parts are used for breathing and reproduction their bodies undergo metamorphism, activating dormant organs that will be used to reproduce. They will turn their needle-like fangs inside out like a blooming flower, turning their body similar to that of palm trees. Once the victims enter the firm's territory, they seem to lose their gazes and walk mindlessly towards the matured worms, as if enchanted to do so. The mechanism behind this phenomenon remains a mystery, whether it be psionic, magical, or perhaps the miasma, the luring vapor they release when prey is detected. I believe the miasma is the most possible explanation, since I and other anthropos are not affected by their enchantment. Unlike other sapient kinds, anthropos, with our inferior olfactory senses, seem to immune to their bewitching allure. I call the phalanes as fangs, due to their similarity to the venomous snake's fangs. They would shoot barbed filaments into the nearest prey, injecting purpley liquid containing their larvae and other unknown substances with horrifying properties. These purple substances cause the host to be mindless and aggressive, dangerous towards other people. This host would be known as the Morbiex. This Morbiex strip of pain sensation, yet possessing unnerving strength, have only one mission in mind, to propagate the worm. They achieve this, infecting others through biting and retching in the purple liquid into others' mouth. The Morbiex body deteriorates rapidly as the larvae grow and consume their host from within, trying to find their way out once they are mature enough. The worm's mode of reproduction reminds me of how flowers reproduce by using bees as their pollinator, a very mutualistic relationship between both parties. But in this twisted scenario, the flowers enslave the bees by carrying their parasitic larvae inside of its victim's body. That's why some locals refer them as the cursed flower of the desert. I need more samples to dissect and study their locomotion, how they can move smoothly in the sand their respiration and their anatomical comparison to the sister Nexon, the Charybdis from the waters of Hylinia. 
I hope I can gather enough knowledge to write the next inscription. Hello everyone, this is me, your host Nick. I made this video with the point of view of one of my protagonists in my Pangeum campaign. Uh, his name is Helian. He is a natural historian and a high priest of the Apollon Temple. I hope this series can get traction from you guys. Uh, and if, if you are interested in the science stuff or behind the scene of making this creature, just comment below and I will upload another video discussing things about that because I combine 15 or 16 different kinds of animals to make these creatures. So if you are interested in going into this journey with me, just comment below. Thank you. Also, I uploaded this video in my two YouTube channels. One in my main channel and the other is my branch channel, specifically dedicated to this Pangeum project. There will be more in-depth discussion about the Pangeum project in the branch channel. My main channel will contain a bunch of different things that I'm interested in. So if you're only interested in th this project, in the Pangeum project, just subscribe to that channel. Thank you.